Joining me now to react, author of the upcoming book Firebrand, Florida Congressman, our friend Matt Gates. Um, we're, we're, you're often on the show. We love having you on. We talk about um, the daily battle in politics and so on. But I want you to look ahead. You, you, you don't often get the chance to talk about policy and long term thinking. I'd love you to look ahead a few years where this conservative populist movement that, that, pre that the president initiated, where do you think it should be heading? I think the establishment hopes that Donald Trump is just a rogue wave, but in fact he's the front end of the wave and as one of the younger members of Congress I have a vested interest in what the future of the Republican Party looks like and I believe it should be a party that embraces the mantra of America first. You didn't hear a lot of Republicans talking about America first before Donald Trump and we should never stray from that brand and that lexicon. It's just really fr funny to hear some of the establishment Republicans talk about MAGA world as a cult of personality. I think they're confused because many of their champions like Mitt Romney and John Kasich had no personality at all. And so having a little personality <laughs> and animating our values with a little bit of energy is a good thing. It's the stuff of winning and it's why in tens of days I believe that the country will reelect Donald Trump and keep the good times rolling. And then, and then when, you, when you see the next generation, you're obviously one of the leaders of that coming, coming up. You see people in the Senate as well, um, where you see people really changing their attitude um, on questions of, on, on, for example, trade and immigration, the role of mm -hmm. um, corporations in our economy, how we need to really think about workers. Do you see that as being a widespread shift within uh, the Republican Party that's going to be a lasting change? We have to reelect Donald Trump if we want the Republican Party to continue to embrace America first values. Because if Donald Trump loses, some of the establishment voices that are still in our party, still in our leadership, folks like Liz Cheney, who would want to invade everywhere and invite everyone to our country, will try to reassert themselves at the top of the party. And so this is not just a definitional moment for America. It's a definitional moment for conservatism. And it's certainly my mm. hope that we do put our people first and that we invest here at home and that we not try to spill every treasure of American tax dollars trying to build democracies out of sand and blood and Arab militias out, uh, out in some distant desert. And one of the areas that you've really focused on, we've talked about it before, is the influence of big money and the big corporations and the donors. You've really taken a lead on that. I think a lot of people see, a lot of Republican voters, regular Republicans, who just say, well, the problem with the establishment was it was just captured by the donors. You're really showing how to escape the clutches of the donors. Just talk about that for a bit. Uh, too many in Washington, D.C. say they're coming to drain the swamp, but then they turn it into their own personal mud bath. I'm the only Republican <laughs> returning to the Congress who has uh, refused special interest PAC money. I don't take any PAC money from any Washington PACs because the American people are my one and only special interest. I think with President Trump we have the opportunity to liberate ourselves from the special interests who seem to be in charge oftentimes no matter which party wins elections. Now I think we really are back to that pro-worker uh, type of policy that brings resources from overseas to fund the ambition and wages and dreams of Americans. I think that's I think that's so smart that you've really not just talked about that but actually done it in terms of your own the way you operate in politics and it's a real model for others. All right stay there for a well, second. Steve, Let's bring know, in, I, I um, just, Sarah. Sure. Go on. No, go on. No, I would just say that, like, you know, politics is supposed to be the noblest of professions, but unfortunately, with the exchange of money for favors in Washington, D.C., it bears too striking a resemblance to the oldest profession. Personally, I'm done picking <laughs> up the money from the lobbyists and the special interests in the nightstand, and I would invite my Republican colleagues to join me. Matt Gates, I just wanted to um, ask you to, to, to think about some other policy areas where we could apply this kind of thinking. Because right now, as I was saying earlier, obviously the priority has to be the economy, just as it was in 2016, get us out of this um, economic hole we're in, get the jobs back. That's what we need. That's what President Trump knows how to do. That's what he'll be focused on, um, we hope, after is re-elected. But beyond that, uh, one issue that, that hasn't sort of been, been right, right, right in the front of things um, so far has been one that you've worked on, which is the environment. And you've got a very interesting um, conservative 
view on that, which I think is really fascinating. I'd love to hear you talk about that. Sure. In response to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal, I filed a Green Real Deal, which means using the vision that a builder like President Trump would have to actually improve the environment that people enjoy. It'll be next week in Florida that President Trump will travel to our state and really survey all of the progress that's been made in the Everglades. You look at the Midwest and the, the real revitalization we've seen with the Great Lakes as a consequence of a business approach to making our environment better so that all Americans can enjoy our natural splendor. We cannot put America first if we allow America to be filthy. President Trump understands that, and his environmental policies mm. haven't been pie in the sky. They haven't been government takeover. They've been empowering states and local communities to do better to clean things up.